to be proud. There are some things, there are some things, beloved, that have been in your life possessions that they have brought out that is fighting aggressively against your health, fighting aggressively against your finances and your money, fighting aggressively against your children, against your marriage. My God, just men married now, having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful wife. But yet you're married, but you still have your mind on Susie. You still have your mind on Mary. You still have your mind on Betty because there is a soul tie. Yes, this is. You still have those pictures. You still have, and I said it, some of you might, I hope nobody feels offended to this, but let me tell you, there are men that will, they'll be in relationships with women and they'll take their undergarments and keep it with them. That possession opens the door for a curse. It's an accursed thing. It raises an evil altar and they still have it in their possession. And you know what will happen? They'll go into a marriage and their, their marriage is, it's, it's havoc, it's repeat re re their marriage. Yes, why? Because there is a seed. The seed of the accursed thing was planted, and now they, have, they are reaping the harvest of chaos. Get rid of those things, my God Almighty. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. We spoke definitively that the accursed thing, just as all the children of Israel just had victory, yes, and just a few days later, going up to a lesser army, weaker people something that they should have easily, easily triumphed over. They lost the battle. So you see them on a high today, but tomorrow they are way down here losing. Beloved, the first thing, the first thing it brings into your life is inconsistency. You cannot maintain consistency in going forward and growing. You cannot grow if there is an accursed thing in your life, there are possessions. It speaks against your growth in God and it separates you from God. Yes, these possessions and these items that raise altars, it, it pulls you back. It pulls you back. No matter how you progress today, tomorrow, you take a step back. You take two steps forward today, and by tomorrow, you feel like, my God, I, I'm not progressing, I'm regressing. I feel like I take I took 10 steps backward because there's an altar raised because of the possessions, the item and the thing that you have in your life. And I'm going through this recap because a lot of persons missed yesterday in fast and service. And that's why it's important because everybody that was in fast and service, right, they, can, they can testify to this, that at the end of the teaching, we pray, even if you don't have it, even if you don't remember, but we went through deliverance, declaring the word of God for our lives, breaking the curses, breaking the soul ties, making sure that we utter it, yes, and that is why, beloved, this is, this is something that we're led to do. And each and every one of you are going to ensure to grow and to progress in God. We are going to have to ensure that you be clutter from your life, from your son. My God Almighty, be clutter. You have to make sure that there is nothing that's going to hold you back, no physical or tangible, um, nothing physical or tangible item. Because even though it's physical, it is creating a spiritual manifestation that is holding you back from growing. My God. Now, that was the first P, possessions. And that's loaded. That's loaded. It's loaded. It's loaded. And I tell you what, I would love to, I would love to stay on it a little bit longer. But we're going to go forward. The next P that we're looking at, practices. Yes. So in order to go forward, we realize that, yes, there is some decluttering. We have to declutter and get rid of the possessions that we had that are keeping us away from God, that are raising evil altars. Yes, declutter from curses, declutter from soul ties, ungodly covenants. But secondly, which is very, very important tonight, we're going to look at practices. My God. In order to grow, you have to make sure that you declutter, you get rid of everything, every practice that is not of God. And when you say practice, in the context of operation growth, we're talking about things that are not of God, the works of the flesh. Yes. So practices, the works of the flesh. My God Almighty. And I want you to turn the Bibles right there where you are, Galatians chapter 5. We're going to look at this, Galatians chapter 5. 
Yes, the works of the flesh, the things that will separate you, separate us from God. It will stunt your growth, the works of the flesh. Read from a verse. Let us quickly look at verse 16. To highlight some context, I would want to read from verse 16 very quickly, but we can, in your study, read verse 16 to 18. Let's just look now at the at verse 19. The reason why I want to do this is because tonight we're going to be very exegetical. We're going to we're going to agree. We have to do that to ensure that we bring out the scripture for your learning. So in your own study, we expect you to read the scripture. But in the interest of time, we're going to start from verse 19. Hallelujah. From verse 19. Now, let us look at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh, hmm, practices, the works of the flesh are manifest. So the very first line there, it tells you, beloved, that whenever you see, what, when we talk about the works of the flesh, the things of the flesh, it never stays silent. It never stays dormant. The works of the flesh always manifest. Whether it be in the life of your family members who are, who are practicing the works, practicing things of the flesh. Yes, whether you as a believer, yes, it is, it, is, it, is, it is really, really important that we get this tonight, that the works of the flesh will always manifest. It will never stay dormant. The works of the flesh is always loud in a bad way. My God Almighty. Word of the, God, of the Lord according to verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? And it goes to explain the first thing, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, my God, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, mm -hmm, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the word of God right here, Paul is saying that, listen, if you are practicing the things of the flesh, you cannot inherit the things of God. And verse 22 now tells you that what? But the fruit of the spirit. So the opposite of the things of the flesh. The opposite of practicing things of the flesh, it is what? Practicing things of the spirit, which is the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit, verse 22, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against which there is no law. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Look, this is powerful. I'm going to take my time. I, I, I. I can get through all of this, but we want to break down the works of the flesh. Practices that are in the lives of believers. Yes, not just sinners, but a lot of these practices, works of the flesh, you have to declutter, you have to get rid of them. Let us look at verse 19, the first one. Yes, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery and fornication. Yes. And everybody should know what adultery and fornication is. Adultery is if you are married and you enter into a sexual relation with someone who is not your, your wife, apart from your wife to your husband, your partner. You do that, you have committed adultery. Yes, fornication. If you are not married and you have sexual intercourse, sexual relations with anybody, anybody, once you're not married to that individual, yes, it's an act of fornication. Oh, beloved, this might seem very, very infantile, rudimentary to some people, but let me tell you this. There are people in church right now, been in church for years, and they don't know what fornication is. My God Almighty. I can tell you, since you're a pastor, I can tell you, there are first persons that come, and I mean it surprisingly. I can remember a while back, very, very, I, I'm telling you, it, it, it shocked me, because a while back, an individual came to me, being in, cheer, in, in church for years, and they said they're saved. The person said, you know what, Pastor, what is fornication? I was shocked. I was shocked. 
it was the individual thought that if they could be in a relationship with somebody at their home, even though they're not married, but because they say they're common law, they are committed in that relationship, then it's not fornication. My God Almighty, beloved, I have to tell you, if you're in a relationship and you're having sexual relations with an individual that you're not married, it is fornication. Yes, it's fornication. Please turn your Bibles very quickly. First Corinthians chapter six. Because beloved, we have to do this. There is even someone, someone brought to my attention a video of a prophet, he is a, a so-called prophet from Africa, sitting doing an interview, and in the middle of the interview, he's there telling people that fornication is not scriptural. So if you have sexual relations with an individual, it is not a sin. My God Almighty. Beloved, this is what we are faced with in this world right now. And if you are not serious about your salvation, you know, you listen tonight, you know, beloved. If you're not serious about your salvation, you'll let, the devil, you'll let the devil fool you and you'll let the devil steal your joy and you'll go right on that broad road to hell. But as your pastor, I have to bring the word of God that is undiluted to you. Yes, First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but be, be not deceived, neither fornicators. Yes, you hear that? So Paul says to the church at Corinth, know ye not the unrighteous. Yes, so the subject here is the unrighteous. The unrighteous. Those that practice the works of the flesh, those that their practices are deemed unrighteous, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor I, I, idolaters, right? Idolaters, or, or, or adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners. My God, it's a long time extortioners, the boat. Not just now. My God Almighty, shall inherit the kingdom, none of them. Verse 11, and such were some of you. Such were some of us. My God Almighty. Now, this, you know, this is telling you that as sinners, when you were in sin and you were in shame and guilt, and that long, that very long list, yes, that verse 10 tells you about the unrighteous. So we... Because each and every one of us has a past. All of us have a past. We all sinned. We're sinners. But through the blood of Jesus, hear what verse 11 says, through us being sanctified, but ye are washed. But ye are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. My God Almighty. Beloved, I don't know if this scripture could settle it in where it tells you this scripture is loaded. I can't say too long on it, but I'm telling you, we're just at adultery and fornication. But those of you who you know back in the days, back when you were in sin, the scripture says that we were, those were the works, the practices of the flesh, making you unrighteous before God. However, beloved, through the washing and the cleansing of the blood of Jesus and through the name of our Lord and by the Spirit of God, you are now made clean, you are now righteous. So nobody now can lay any charge. Who can lay any charge to God's name? It is God justified. If any man be him, he is now a new creature. All things, all practices, my God, behold, all things are now new. So the word of God is telling us right away. Okay, it has to, all those things have to be put up. They are the works of the flesh, my God Almighty. Yes, so first thing there it speaks to, when you read Galatians that we just read, Galatians chapter 5, and it tells you about the lasciviousness that is sexual conduct lewd and indecent. That is why the child of God, if you are saved, you cannot be lewd and indecent. Yes, sexual misconduct, promiscuity, all of these things, beloved, as the child of God that cannot be found near you. Why? Because it raises an altar. It would speak against you. 
<laughs> Beloved, if you do not stay away from these things, you know, the enemy who is always an accuser of the brethren, he is always going to accuse you. It doesn't matter what you declare out of your mouth. It is what you're doing. Your light has to speak for you. So you might come to church and you might hear us say, declare that you are blessed. Open it out, decree and declare. And everybody knows those two words, you know. Did you know that even sinners know time to decree and decree and declare? Yes. Sinners, people who are their practices are not lined up to the word of God, but they are declare, declaring and decreeing now. Everybody is declaring and decreeing. Yes, because everybody wants to be blessed. But the word of God is telling us that, listen, if your practices are not lined up to the word of God, if they are unrighteous, there is no growth, there is no development, there is no blessing, my God Almighty. So let me tell you this, the next time you open up your mouth and you declare something and decree, make sure that your practices are in line with the word of God. Mm. Yes. Yes, let's just look at the next scripture. The next word there. I, I, I really, beloved, I'm going to take my time with this because I, a lot of questions, a lot of questions have come up. Persons have been asking questions and um, we just want to bring some clarity to ensure that you are all understanding the importance of growth. If you are going to grow, if you're going to develop, you have to get rid of not just physical possessions, but now your practices have to be decluttered. You have to get rid of those practices that are not lining up with the word of God. Now, remember, it says adultery, fornication, uncleanness. My God, those three words there in the beloved, it is serious. It speaks to those sexual connotation, lasciviousness. See there, lasciviousness that we just talked about. First Corinthians 6, verse 9. Read, read all of that. Use that as a prayer point when you're praying, Father, I need deliverance. I need deliverance, Lord. Help me break those curses. Go into prayer. There are, listen, the prayer God says, this kind comment of only through prayer and fasting. Listen, you might be having an issue with fornication. You're not a liar. You don't thief. You don't murder. You know that the, the, the habit in the flesh is what is buffeting you, is what is keeping you away, is separating you from the blessings of God. It is separating you from growing. You have to go down in prayer and fasting. Fast about the issue. Put it before God. Yes, kill the flesh. Yes. Yes, yes, I'm going to feed the flesh, turn down the plate and say, I am going to fast and I am going to allow the flesh to die and the spirit of God within me thrive, thrive, my God Almighty. Yes. So variance, my God, that's a word that anybody understands or you didn't know the meaning of variance. Mm -hmm. It's right there, right there, right there. Verse 20, idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred, variance. My God, can I touch quickly on this idolatry? A little bit. Idolatry is not just possessions now, not just graven images. But did you know that any, there are right now, ministry can be an idol to some people? Yes. Did you know that ministry can be an idol? <laughs> My God, yes, because there are persons that are so in love with ministry more than they're in love with God. Yes, right now in Jamaica, there are men and women that they love the pulpit so much that they love it more than Jesus. They love the pulpit. They, they, they love, if you take the pulpit away from them, they will kill themselves. They, some of them would jump off that bridge. Some of them would give up, their, they, they, they would go in their beds and they would lie down and cry for an entire month if you tell them you can't pray for a month. This is an idol. Yes, there are persons that their family becomes idol. Yes, yes. Some of them, I'm telling you, they, they'll choose their family over God. There are men that will choose their wives over God. They put their wives on a pedestal. And listen, the word of God says that you should love men who should love husband to their wives. And this is, you know, pastor, we know the word. We're saying husbands must love their wives. Wives must also do the same. Love husbands, submit, submit to husbands. But listen, the word of God is very clear. I'm telling you to be at a belief of individuals as idols. Some of some persons, they have their jobs as idols. 
I thought, hmm, my gosh, I'll tell you, witchcraft, witchcraft, beloved, beloved, we're living in a time maker where if you think it, you'd be surprised what your neighbor is doing in their house. You would be surprised what your neighbor is doing behind closed doors. And they come out every morning and tell you, they tell you, good morning. They, 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 they even worry about you. Some of them even go to church too. But they are practicing witchcraft. Yes, I got a lot of persons that even come to church are practicing witches and practicing warlocks. My God. Yes, that is why our eyes must be open and we must, we don't just perceive, but we also have to ensure that we are beloved. We have to make sure that we are discerning. We are discerning. You're not just looking out of your regular eyes and perceiving what you have to look through the eyes of the spirit and discern. Yes, because it's not everybody that says, Lord, Lord. Hmm. I thought Almighty. Yes. Witchcraft. Hatred. Look, this is another practice that we have to, let it not be named among any of us. It is a practice that we must declutter. Make sure that hatred is never found in you. Hatred must never found in you. We're living in a time where people hate persons. You don't have to do them anything. But because the very blessing that is on your life, somebody will use that blessing as a means to just hate you. Don't see the sacrifice that you are paying to be blessed. They don't see the years of service. They don't see the sacrifice. They don't see how you are covenanted with God. They just see that you are blessed as a woman of God, as a man of God. And they just see that they're not going to like you. They're going to hate you. Let it never be found in you, beloved. It's unrighteous and it is something that will open doors for you to be cursed. It will open, it will stunt your growth. If you see someone that is always hateful, I will show you somebody that is not growing. Mm. My God Almighty, they're actually regressing. Hallelujah. Moving on. Hatred, variance. My God, that word variance. You know what variance means? Variance means truth breaker. Truth breakers. Variance, when the word of God there speaks variance, it's talking about altercation or changing of agreements, truth breaking. My God Almighty. Let's look quickly at 2 Timothy 3. Let me see if I can find that very quickly. I, beloved, we really, really, really have to read these scriptures so you can. I want you to digest this tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to read from verse 1. Yes, yeah, Second Timothy chapter three. Hallelujah. Let me take the time. I I I, I was just going to give you the scripture. Second Timothy. I was just going to give you the scripture, but I really want to read it. I want to spend some time, about two minutes in this. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one to three. Hallelujah. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, my God, ungratefulness, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. That word truth breakers there speaks to variance. Truth breakers. People who do not believe in covenant, they do not honor covenant. My God, men and women that are truth breakers, beloved truth breakers, you know, people that will even be saved, be Christians, but they do not honor covenant. They don't honor covenant with God and they don't honor covenant with men. Men and women who will keep their life, they will, they will say, Lord, I am in such a bind. I am, in a, I, I, Lord, I feel like the world is against me. If you bring me out of this situation, I will live for you. My God. They covenant with God. God bless them and bring them out. And you know what? Variance. Truth breaking. They go back against the word that they gave to God. The word of God says, better a man never make a vow and break that vow. Thank God Almighty. This is very, very serious, beloved. Truth breakers. Yes. 
not just sinners, but also for us in the body of Christ. We have to take covenant serious. And that is why when we come into covenant with this house, we, we beloved, we took the time to deep dive and tell you the importance of covenant. Don't break covenant. Don't be a truce breaker. Yes, covenant in you, men and women, man and wife is a covenant. And a man goes behind his wife and says, listen, a man, discard her and go take up a woman. Woman, the wife, the husband, nothing. Love him, love him, love him. And it breaks the truth. Breaks the covenant. Yes, there has to be deliverance and there has to take place. There has to be a mending. Same thing, women, breaking covenant. You know, you have brothers and brothers breaking covenant. Yes, daughters breaking covenants to parents, sons breaking covenants to parents. My God Almighty, I don't want to stay on this too long. Variants, truth breakers. My God, practices that you have to get rid of. Declutter those practices. There are persons who have been cultured into your don't, you don't, your word mean nothing. My God Almighty. The word means nothing. So you'll go and you'll tell somebody that, listen, man, I, I, I am going to make sure that I have your back. There are persons that you can in covenant with them. Beloved, if you're going to covenant with somebody and they prove to be a true speaker, don't be afraid to just you step back. Because if you see the sign that they are breaking covenant and they cannot honor covenant and they are truth breakers. Yes, whether it means word or deed, beloved, step back. Because they are avoiding the covenant. My God Almighty. Mm. Emulations, that's the next word. Verse 20, we're still in verse 20. So you have variance, which is truth breaking. And you have emulations. My God Almighty. The word emulation there is jealousy. Mm. Look at this is another one that is brutal enough. And it is rife in the body of Christ, it is rife, whether it be at work, it is rife in humanity, on the planet, you have jealousy that is rife and it is dangerous. It is very dangerous because Genesis chapter four tells you, I want to write that down, Genesis chapter four and verse six. The Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wrath? Where is your brother? Did you know that before killed Abel. It started with jealousy. It started with jealousy. Jealousy leads to anger. Never forget that. Anger leads to wrath. And wrath, it leads to murder and everything else that is ungodly and diabolical. Yes. Do you know the reason why Jamaica is like this? Why we have so many people going to Banyard and Hotel and so many people. So there are, there are persons that will even put money for other persons, pay persons to hurt other people. You know where it's coming from? Jealousy. A lot of, a lot of it, most of it is coming from jealousy, you know, beloved. When I tell you jealousy, jealousy, it is a demon that opens doors to greater things. A man that is jealous is always going to be angry because he is angry. Cain realized that the Lord accepted his brother's sacrifice, able sacrifice. And before Cain humbled himself and said, let me find out why his sacrifice was accepted and mine was not. Cain was jealous. And that jealousy, it drove him to be angry. My God. And he nursed the anger. He never get rid of it. He nursed the anger. He nursed it until the anger turned into wrath. Mm. And then that anger now burned into wrath until you couldn't hold it no more. Hold it no more. And so he decided to murder his brother. Yes. Premeditatedly. Cain killed Abel, decided to never just see him one day and the devil just jump in him. No, it was a seed that started with jealousy. It started with emulation. It is a practice that the child of God must seek and get rid of. Never allow that to be in you. My God Almighty, I wonder if you're hearing me tonight. Never allow that seed to fall in your heart and grow and germinate into because you see the seed of jealousy. When that seed of jealousy, so it's it's not a, a small thought. Why is she 
always want son. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or why mommy have to always like her? Why daddy have to always like him? Yes. Why the boss have to always have her on a pedestal? Why does the boss, why does the manager always have to have him on a pedestal? It starts with a small seal, you know? and then the jealousy becomes, it turns to anger, where the anger, and something with anger and anger can hide. <clears throat> well, jealousy is a small seed, and sometimes it can hide. It will rear its own head after a while, no, but jealousy, you can take time and try and decoy it. But anger is something that it anger loves. My God Almighty, <laughs> Holy Ghost. Cain could not hold it any longer. I am sure that while Cain was around eight, he was jealous. And poor Abel did not realize that his own brother was jealous because Cain, in the jealousy, the jealousy was just, it started off as a small seed. And jealousy, emulation was in his heart, but it don't stay there. Jealousy is something that grows and it grows quick. It is like a disease and a cancer. It metastasizes. Before you realize that you have jealousy in your heart, you realize you become angry. You're angry with the world. People, you don't even know why you're angry. You're just angry because you're jealous. And that jealousy is going to bring you to wrath. And then you're going to do something that you shouldn't do. My God, emulation. Get rid of that practice. It must be decluttered. My God. Almighty. The next word, wrath. My God. Mm. Here we just talk about emulation, which is what? Jealousy. And then it speaks to what next? Wrath. Jealousy leads to anger. Anger leads to wrath. My God Almighty. Can I give you some word? Turn your Bibles to Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 26. Hallelujah. It says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. My God Almighty. So guess what? You might find yourself in a moment of anger. But do not allow anger to tarry. Don't make it tarry. The word of God says, don't make it Hurry and do not allow because anger leads to wrath. And once you are in wrath, do not allow the day to end and catch you in that state. Because perpetual wrath leads to all different types of diabolical things. And God, mm. so, do you know what wrath is? It is an uncontrollable anger issue. There are men and women in Jamaica have a wrath problem. Wrath. wrath. Always rough. It was all uncontrollable anger and rage. That is what that is one of the biggest problems in Jamaica. They don't take time to sit down and talk about things. If somebody step on a man to or a woman to, they are just there is so much wrath where immediately there's a war and a fight. There's a reason why there's so much domestic abuse. There's so there's a reason why you have men and women that are just you saw the news. People are dying. A lot of things are happening because of domestic abuse, because they're living in a house and their fuse is so short. The least little thing, they fly off. Anger. My God. Mm. Beloved, this is, this is, I hope we're learning tonight. I hope we're learning tonight. Do not let it. You are angry. It's going to bring you to wrath. Don't make the sun go down. Do not let the day end. Leaving you in sway. Once that seeds be, that seed begin to germinate, that anger start to turn to wrath, then you're going to go to a different, you're going to something terrible, something diabolical is about to be born. My God Almighty. Mm. Powerful. Hallelujah. Strife. What does strife mean? Strife means contention, struggling for superiority. Beloved, um, Lord of mercy, I don't know if I'm going to get through all of this tonight because there's so much to unravel and to unwrap. Beloved, did you know that in churches, one of the number one reasons a lot of churches die is because of this same word, strife. Yes, contention. There are some persons that the enemy will send into ministry. There are agents of the, the enemy to just, they, they come with a bit of seed. Seeds of contention. 
And, and beloved, they will just plant those seeds. I'm telling you, you know, I, my eye big and uh, wide open for kingdom grace. And anytime I see strife, anytime I see contention, you know, I am just waiting to apply a scripture. I want you to turn your Bibles to Proverbs 22. Hallelujah. We're going to shame the devil tonight with the word of God. Yes? We're going to be exegetical. We're going to use the word of God to grow. We're going to, listen, we're not doing this thing by feelings. We're not doing this thing by what I think. Beloved, did you know that there are churches right now? They will, they will wither. They don't grow. Wither and die. Because strife and contention, it sucks the life out of ministry. So much so that this is what the word of God says. Proverbs 22, verse 10. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. Cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. My God. So let me help a pastor who is watching. Let me help a man of God or a woman of God who is pastor and lead a ministry and your head hurting and your stress out because guess what? There is a lot of strife and contention that is happening in the ministry. You go to church and there is no peace. The light is leading in your ministry. Let the word of God deliver you, man of God, woman of God. It is supposed to be easy. The word of God is making it easy. Decisions are not made. It is the word of God. So it's not Pastor Lewis. It's not the gospel according to Pastor Lewis. This is the word of God. It is telling you that we are, there are some persons, they are so easily identified, always in contention. Always fighting and striving. The word of God says, cast the scorn out, cast them out and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Do not be afraid to tell people that, listen, do I shake your hand? God bless you, but this is not for you. Because the strife and the contention that you are living in, it is sucking the life and it is causing people to lose their souls. People are losing their mind, losing their peace, and you show them the door. I wonder if you're hearing me, if you can hear me loud. I'm, just type in and if you can hear us. That is a kingdom where it's not going up. We, as your pastor, I can tell you, we, we have no problem with strife. Kingdom grace, not we have any problem with contention and struggling and battering and fighting. We don't have it because we have a door that don't, it, it open and it close. We have a door that goes to stay locked. It's not locking everybody. And we have a pastor that goes by the word of God. So listen. And I'm telling you, this is not pastors, leaders. This is not something you need to feel, feel bad about. The word of God tells you, wherever you are in the world right now, anybody that comes, they are agents of the enemy. It's strife. Practices. They, I mean that there is no peace around them. They come with an aura. Strife and contention. And they come to tear down, not to build, but tear down. My God Almighty, call them and just give them the scripture and just bless them and tell them to go. My God Almighty. And, and you might say the King James Version is a bit aggressive. Let us see what the New Living Translation says. My God. The same Proverbs 22 and verse 10. It says, throw, my God, this one even worse. It says, throw out the mocker and fighting goes to quarrels and insults will disappear. But sometimes we say King James Version harsh. So the New Living Translation says, throw out the mocker and fighting goes to quarrels and insults will disappear. Listen, this church now got no problem with it. We, not, we have no problem. No problem. So beloved, this is the remedy. So if, if, if wherever you are in the world, whether you be in Kingdom Grace, whether you be in, in, in Pakistan watching, whether you be in the United States, whatever you have said, let the person there in the Caribbean, um, Lorna, anywhere you are in ministry, anywhere you are, and you allow the spirit of strife to overcome you, and you don't want deliverance, and you trust in the house of God causing contention. This is scripture that is applicable to you. you are, we're, going to, we're going to give you grace. We will have a conversation with you, but if there's no change, we show you the door. Yes, this is the word of God. 
Because the men and women, beloved, I'm telling you, that's why sometimes you pass churches. They are big, but they are empty. Yes. You pass churches, they look nice, but nothing not happening there because the spirit of contention reeks up. It is a very dangerous spirit that I don't even give an inch. We don't. We do not give it an inch. And so, beloved, even in your family life, there are some relatives that once they come around him. Husband and wife, you're married. Even the young couples, let me tell you this. You will have some relatives, you're just married, and you can't even enjoy your, 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 your married life because God has placed you in this union with this man or this woman. And you have this one relative that every time they come around, they want to cause contention. Listen to me, tell them to leave you alone. Tell them that, listen, if you're not going, if you're always causing contention, you're causing contention in my marriage, I need you to go. And according to the word of God, it says that if you throw up the monk and the fighting will go with them too. Quarrels and insults will disappear. Right? Let us look at the amplified version then. Maybe King James and New Living Translation, too harsh. Let us look at the amplified version, which normally breaks it down. And it is very, very passive. So let's look at that one. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read this song. Drive out the scar, the, 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 the scoffer, and contention will go away. Even strife and dishonor will cease. My God Almighty. Drive out the scoffer, and contention will go away. Even strife and dishonor will cease. Mm. Yes. Anywhere you find strife, you're going to find dishonor. Anywhere you find contention, we're going to find this honor. And that is why Kingdom Grace, we, we are serious. We're a people of honor. We know of honor, you cannot serve in Kingdom Grace. Cannot. Cannot. Because it's contrary to the word of God. It don't matter. You could be anointed. You, you People could touch you. And if they touch the end of your shirt, they get healed. If you're a person of this honor, you cannot serve in Kingdom Grace. You could be filled with all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that when you go on the road, it will never work. You float. If there's dishonor in you, you cannot serve because dishonor, strife, and contention are like seed. They are weeds. They grow quick and hard to get rid of. It's like wild Bahamian grass. When they take over your lawn, my God Almighty. Yes. Terrible, can't get it out. So when we see the seed of pearl, we crop it out. My God Almighty, this is the word of God, not according to Pastor David Lewis, but it's the word of God that is given for us for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Take it, beloved. Wherever there is strife in your family, in the workplace, wherever there is strife in the job, strife. Yes, in church, strife. In departments, get rid of it. Let me tell you this. If you don't kill strife, and if you don't get rid of it, you don't get rid of this honor, then it's going to suffocate and kill you. Yes. If you try to, if you try to pacify this honor, if you try to pacify strife, then it's going to hold you back and you're going to regress. That is why this ministry, we have no problem. Beloved, that's why love is in the ear. Here as I tell you, people say love is in the ear. When you come to him, love is in the ear because I preach this hard. I go and bring it around the bush and pretty it up. If you are an individual like I can't live with people, don't bother come around here. So. If you cannot live good with people, this is not for you. Find an church, go on somewhere, then let them go. But if you are a person of love, if you are a person that you are a person of honor, then this is a place for you. This is a breeding ground for honor. That is why so many people have been blessed in the middle of it. That is why you see so many testimonies behind each other, testimony after testimony. That is why you see so many supernatural things happening. You think it's just me? It's not no, it is the atmosphere that it is. In. There is an atmosphere in a beloved. The atmosphere sets and depicts it, it, it predicts. It, you can look at an atmosphere and you just predict that listen, that church must be blessed because of the atmosphere. You can go into the church and because of that rich, right atmosphere, you know that listen, God is here. 
It is predictive. So people are not being healed. So many testimonies are not happening because of Pastor Lewis. No, it is because of the atmosphere that we culture. It is the, it is the culture that we allow to be fostered. Culture of honor. Love. Yes. So we don't deal with strife around here. So don't. And, and I say this loud and clear so everybody knows. So if you're somebody that you know that seed of contention and that seed of, 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 of always struggling and striving, if you, if you know that seed is in you, then I'm telling you from now, it's, this is not for you. Not for you. Not for you. My God. Strife. Then you look at seditions. Mm. And that sedition there, you know what it means? Influencing, inciting, and inciting. These are things that we have to preach and have to teach, not just preach, but teach them. So, beloved, you know now, you know, as a member, if you have a new convert coming and they are, you see that there's a seed of inciting, influencing for inciting or inciting, you realize that they're coming and they are new to the body of Christ, and you have to guide them and say, listen, no, we don't do that around here. Those are practices that we do not bring into the house of God. You might have done it while you were not, but when you are saved, you're coming into the body of Christ now. This is not something that we do. You tell them. Mm -mm. This is something that we tell all new converts. This is something that we talk to every new believer coming in. You're the new member. You might be getting transferred from another church and you're coming here. I don't know what used to go on at that church that you used to be at. But when you come to this church, we don't deal with strife and contention. No. And we don't deal with seditions. We don't deal with influencing, inciting, and inciting. This is a pastor that deal with things straight on. And God has given me the anointing, not the business. I don't, it, I'm telling you, I, it, it, you might feel bad, but if the word of God says, and it is, beloved, these things, you know, it affects other people, you know. It is like thorns that, that will grow up and strangle the life out of people. There are persons that are coming into the body of Christ and they want to learn, grow, and mature. And because of, and you know, these incitings and fighting is obvious from people who in church a long time. I don't know why. But we, I am so glad it's not here. And I am preaching this because it has to be embedded. It, this word has to be embedded in the foundation. It has to be embedded. And, and if you're going to be a quality member, if you're going to be a quality son of God, you have to know this in your mind so that you can easily identify. So it's when you identify it and you see, you tell them, you say, sister, get rid of the seed because you're now going to survive in the environment here. This environment, it does not really, it, does not, it is not conducive for strife. It, it, it is something, it, it is, that seed is going to die and we're going to pluck it out and throw it away. Yes, I like that. I like that comment. Learn, unlearn, and relearn. My God. And, beloved, and this is growth we're talking about. Because you are not good. Dude, I'm telling you. I don't, this is what anybody wants to say. Your words, your words, don't, beloved words are cheap. If you want to show growth, it is changed behavior. So somebody will come and they say they love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus so much. He is my lover of my soul. But yet, if you when you go your body down and look, you realize your own them bedroom is a shrine practicing which you go on the job, they kill it and that by and tear on body. That person is not growing, that person is reversing. You go to their family life, you realize that they don't love people. They're always in contention and fighting and inciting. You realize that there's no growth. Change behavior is the sign of growth, not the words that you speak. God Almighty. That is why I tell you, declaration and decrees are important. But if your lifestyle does not match up to the declaration that you're making, you know, the words drop right in front of you. And some people stand up in church and they, I declare and decree, I am healed, I declare and decree that my finances are, I declare, I declare, I decree and up and heaven. But if your lifestyle, if your behavior, if your practices are found wanting, beloved, those declarations, the devil is laughing at us. The devil and demons, they are laughing if your practices are not matching up to the word of God. Yes, we're a serious church. Serious, we take it serious, but we don't have the time to waste. 
We do not waste time. This is a time God is coming back and he's saying that, listen, we have to make sure that we have impact. Before, beloved, before God makes his appearance, make him fulfill your purpose. We don't have time to waste. We don't have time to waste. This is one pastor that is serious about purpose. Serious. If, if, if you are not, if you're not purpose driven, you're not growing. If you're not purpose driven, you're not, you're not growing. If you are saying sweet words and your behavior has not changed, you're not growing. My God Almighty, we are talking about be profiting practices. If your practices are not matching up to the words that are coming out of your mouth, if the practices, remember, see Galatians 5, it tells you, verse 22, it tells you, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, again, such a law. If your practices are not reflecting fruit, that is why I tell you, it is not, you cannot put emphasis on charisma and being spirited and you're not being fruitful. Mm. Because you will practice, you will have charisma and you will be spirited and you will prophesy. Yes, we will do all of these things. We will prophesy. We will see, we will lay hands on the sick. Dead men will be raised. People who are lame will walk. But if there is no fruit, at the end of the day, the word of God tells you that you're going to stand before him. And his God is going to say, I never knew you. I never knew you. Because for me, you walk out of iniquity. Imagine you can prophesy. Prophesy powerful like Elijah, like Ezekiel, like Jeremiah. Prophesy. You can lay hands like Peter, Paul. You see dead men raised up. There are, we see healings, mass healings happening, but no fruit. You must decrop and get rid of those negative practices, and you must adapt fruit because there are people that are spirited. But because they are spirited, they think that they are, of course, saved. You cannot be spirited and not be fruitful and expect that you are going to see the face of God. You cannot be spirited and not be fruitful and think that you're going to grow. And that is why I say, give me fruit any day. Because fruit is what is necessary. By their fruits, you shall know them. Not by how spirited they are. Not by how much tongue we speak in. By the fruit, we will be known. By the practices of the fruit of the Spirit. That's what's going to, of course, if you want to know a child of God, it's not by how much tongues we speak in, not by how much time we run on the church, not by how many prophecies. Yes, because men and women will prophesy, but there is no fruit. Prophesy, but there is no behavior that has been changed. Mm. That is why we are not result-oriented. We're growth-oriented because results are not always good. Moses threw down his rod, and the result, it turned into a serpent. That was a miracle from God. Jambres, the magicians of Israel, they threw down their rods and got the same result. So you cannot be result-oriented. You have demons and witches that will speak in more flowing tongues than you and I. Yes. We cannot dwell on spiritism. Spirited. No. Fruit. If your behavior is not changing, you're not growing. My God Almighty. Let me look at one last word there. Heresies. Can touch verse 21. Just one verse alone we can do tonight. Heresies, and, and oh God, this word is loaded. I, I can't even finish this. I can't even go I'm going to have to finish. Heresies, false doctrines, false theologies. This one word, beloved, I'm going to have to teach on this, you know, because God light a fire in my belly for this, you know. There is some false doctrine, some false theology, lack of exegesis, EGG. Let me tell you something. There, it is serious. 
serious because we are men and women now. We are now selling out because we want to see a result. But the result don't mean that there is growth or impact. We are just saying things. Beloved, we have to be very, we have to be very, 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 very careful in this last day. Then God, let me just read this one scripture. Let me read this one scripture. Second John. Turn to it. Second John. And it's only one chapter. Second John chapter one. It's at verse nine. Hallelujah. Second John. One chapter less there. Verse nine. Read it with me. It says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath, he hath both the Father and the Son. Verse 10. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Let me tell you this. There are some devious doctrines, falsehood, false theology. Mm. It is, attacking the, it is attacking the body of Christ now more than ever. And that is why we're not seeing growth the way we're supposed to see it. Because of what? Heresy. Heresy. And the word of God says, you know, so potent that if anybody should come and they come with heresy, false theology, false doctrine. Beloved, there are some things I'm telling you some, I'm telling you the video that I, it's, I, I, looked at, I looked at it and I was worried because there is this man talking all sorts of things that is so way off, deviating from the word of God. And you know what I saw? I saw this man on a flyer saying he's coming to Jamaica. Yes. Because right now, it's like everybody, no, any, anybody can just come and just come and read this word and say, all right, this is a new theology, this is a new thought, and we grab on to it, and we can take the time to vet it and wait according to the word of God. The word of God says, receive him not in terrors, neither be in God's speed. What does God's speed mean? It means you're looking at somebody and say, may God grant you success. So you cannot, you cannot declare success on a man or a woman, anybody, any entity. If, it, if you are spewing falsehood, false theology, if you're spewing it, you're not even supposed to speak a blessing over there. I got. But I can't go any further on this one. This is going to require some time. And, and I promise you, I'm going to do a teaching on it. I'm going to address some of these things because God has lit a fire in me. Because guess what? This is what we have to contend for the faith that which was once given to us. We have to ensure that, listen, we stick to what the word of God says. Yes. And every, every revelation that is released, it has to be released and come in accordance to the word of God. And that is why we, we, we take our time. We we'll be exegetical. We take our time and we we'll make sure that we, we use the word of God to validate the word of God. We don't use dreams to validate thoughts. We don't come and preach and use our own theology or what we think or a new revelation to say, all right, this is, no, 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 no. We use the word of God to validate what is released in the hearts and the minds of men and women. It is not my thought, right? Any revelation that you get must come in a line with the word of God. And the word, and, and I, I can't continue, but, but I, I tell you, the word, start reading the word, and they'll take one line out of the word and they will justify a heresy. They'll use one word, you know. They don't use word to confirm word. They don't do exegesis. They don't study the word, but they study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. 
we have, and it, it is so sad that the world is not being rightly divided and it's bringing up heresies and it is causing practices in the body of Christ that is separating us. And it is not, it sounds good sometimes and it sounds so nice, but it is hindering growth and development. We have to stop here, beloved. Practices. We just went through one verse tonight. It took us a lot of time, but there are practices that have to be decluttered. Beloved, make sure. There's a lot that was said tonight. Make sure you watch it over. Make sure you share it. There are practices, not just for the sinner. We always say the sinner needs, sinner man need to change. No, 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 no. For us as Christians, for us as sons and daughters of God, there are practices that you have to declutter, get rid of. Just as you throw away some possessions, some items, you know, there are some practices that you're going to have to throw apart from him. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, God, that even now as we speak, the word of God, the undiluted word of God, word that brings change, the word that brings transformation, the word that we, if we want to be transformed. We have to be renewed. We are renewed, hallelujah, in our minds. And so I pray right now, Father, the word of God, it will permeate, it will enter the hearts and the minds of your people so that transformation can take place. Let their minds be renewed so that they can be transformed. We want to be transformed totally, renewed in our minds through the word of God. Hallelujah. We want to be filled with the knowledge of God. Oh, my God Almighty. We want to be filled with the spirit of God. You, Father, that will lead us to all truth. There are practices, Lord, the practice according to your word, the works of the flesh, it is of the flesh and not the spirit, contrary to the fruit of the spirit. These practices are contrary to the fruit of the spirit. Father, let there be a decluttering, let there be a cleansing. Father, let us hold ourselves accountable. Let us hold each other accountable. Let us stand resolute to ensure that these practices are rooted out, root and stem. Pulled out of our lives, pulled out of our families, pulled out of ministries, pulled out of churches, so that we can thrive, so that we can grow. Operation growth requires us, Father, to ensure that we get rid, get rid, we pull out, we throw away, we declutter these practices. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word that separates bone and marrow. Your word that is a hammer, it shatters. Your word, the sword of the spirit that is sharper than any two-edged sword. We apply the word of God tonight. Hallelujah. Let there be deliverance and let there be transformation and let there be change. We desire to grow. We desire to see our behaviors, our patterns, practices change. And come in align with the word of God so that we can grow, mature, and develop in you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, God bless you. We want to, we, beloved people, we're going to ask you to share this. If you haven't shared, if you're here and you haven't subscribed to our YouTube page yet, um, or admin, we'll just quickly paste our YouTube page into the chat. You can go into the chat, or you can just type on your phone right now. Go to YouTube. Type in Kingdom Grace International Ministries. You'll see us. We're going to ask you to subscribe. Subscribe to us. Hit the notification bell. Share it. Get persons to subscribe and support us. Hallelujah. We're serious about God. We're serious about the things of God. And we're serious about growth. We're serious about your development. You might be an unsaved. You're looking for somebody to partner with. Yes. Or admin just posted it there on YouTube. It's right here below. The link is here. Just click it. Go right now. Subscribe. You have your phone in hand. You have your device there. Just go quickly subscribe. You can support us that way. There are a lot of initiatives that we have. When you subscribe, you go to the YouTube channel. You click the about button. You go there. You'll see our Kingdom Grace, a digital magazine. Wonderfully done by gifted and blessed people, workers here. Wonderful job that they did. It tells you everything that we, from we started ministry up until this year, January, March, January, February. It gives you a full break on what we did leading up to March. That is something that will give you an idea of what we're about, what we have been doing, and even where we want to go. You want to partner with us. You want to become a member. 
have a conversation with any one of our leaders. You can engage us. You can call the number, email us, Kingdom Grace, I am at gmail.com, or you can text, use our WhatsApp number, which is 7880100. You want to become a member, you engage us. There are so many means of giving. There are so many means of serving in the house of God. There are so many means of creating an impact locally and globally. This house, we're serious about impact. That's what we're about. We, 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 we love God and we love people. And, and, and just by the teaching tonight, you realize, you should realize, if you don't realize yet, we mean business. And we mean business in serving God. We don't have time to waste. And we, do, we don't want to give the devil even an inch because if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. You cannot play with him. And so we do not leave any stone unturned. We're serious about ministry. And this is somewhere that you can fulfill your purpose. We invite you to come and visit us this Sunday. This Sunday is going to be powerful. Chart number seven at Hills Hardware Plaza. You come, you're going to feel at home right there. Or just look in the chat, you'll see our email address that's posted there by our admin. Our email is there, our number is there. We want you to come. We, we're moving away. Remember, we're COVID done. So we're not having Sunday church at home. We are in house. We're inviting you to come out. We have our fasting services. It's a blessing. We thank God. We have Pastor Sam there from Pakistan. Pastor Sam, God bless you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We are getting ready for school. Pastor Sam, the kids are coming in Pakistan. It is morning. That school now and the kids are coming in. Man of God, I'm going to ask you to turn on your video. Admin, could you have Pastor Sam's video on? And we're just going to ask him to give a quick greeting. The children are coming in. We want to see Pastor Sam right there. Yes. Hallelujah. So it, right now it's 9, it's 9.15 p.m. here in Jamaica, but it's about 7.15 a.m. there in Pakistan. So school is about to start. We have the kids that just came in. They're there coming in. That's Kingdom Grace Primary School. Hallelujah. Somebody give glory for that. Give God glory. Give God glory. Give God glory for that. We give God all the praise and all the glory. We're, we're looking there. Let me get Pastor Sam off mute so that we can just quickly hear, hear from him. Yes, greetings. Greetings, Pastor David. How are you, sir? I am doing well. I'll just give us a quick rundown. Let's see the, the students that are early. The early birds. They are early. You see how early they come? School don't start and they come early, early. Yeah, let's see yeah let's see. it's a, it's a it's a seven seventeen seven a.m. seventeen seven seventeen, and we start the school seven thirty because it's the weather is going to be uh, like uh, uh, hot every day, so we are uh, starting early and so that we can be free early. So I like about the hello girl. Wow, wow. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, hello, girl. Wow. This is our soldier, and this is our beautiful girl here. She is the first who came in school. She's the first one, the early bird. One, what's her name? Can we have her name? What is her name? Have an idea? A Manahil, M U N A H I L, Manahil. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We bless her. We bless all the kids. Listen, Kingdom Grace is a place of excellence, and we man, we love time. And you see, the children they've caught that, they've caught the spirit, they've grabbed that culture. Manahil, M -U -N -A -H -I -L. wonderful. And they're there early. Wonderful, seeing her there, it's a blessing. Love it. This is what, when you give into the ministry, this is what it goes to. It is, it is going to bless these children. They have their books, they have their pencils, they're stationary. It's wonderful. Um, the teachers, the teachers, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Right there, man of God, keep your, keep your, open your mind so that we can make sure that we're seeing you and hearing you. Yes, so beloved, yeah. yes, what you're seeing right now, all of these children, you know, we, we it's kingdom grace a store primary school and we we school starts when school starts it's full you can see it it's full. a lot of noise the kids enjoy themselves but these are the early birds it's 30 it's 7 15 other 
to be on there. We, we have shared. If you want to see a video, there's a video on our YouTube also. If you'll go to YouTube short, you'll see a video that was posted the first two weeks. You'll see a wonderful how the kids are learning, how the teachers are interacting with them. So that's in itself is a blessing. And Pastor David, you know, uh, one thing more, we want to say thank you so, so much like uh, for your favor, for your love for our people, because our community are going through from the crisis, from the hurdles, and they are not able to pay the fee, school fee. So when you supported us, like we have just started the school so that uh, we will not take any fees from any children, any family. So this is a one teacher just came here and uh, it's just early morning and it's start of the school starting time so i was saying like uh, we are so much thankful to you keep praying for pakistani people and you know people want to um, uh, get admission the more admission but we are not taking any more children and we are praying uh, we are saying to people like uh, we will take more children next year after this class so this class will be go into the next class in the like a nursery and we will take the more people like in the in a uh, like uh, uh, you can say in uh, in the in the uh, in the like uh, in the play group so the children will grow by day by day and we just need uh, please keep praying keep praying because we need your prayers we need your love and so that we can grow, we can pay teachers, we can get the more books, the stationery, and um, you know, as we, you, as we have shared with you, we are in need of water cooler, the yes. cool water cooler, so that children can get a clean water, cool water, and after that we will uh, see what we need, so that we can request for a prayer, because you know your prayer is working a lot. Yes, yes, and 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 we we're believing God. We're believing God. We're believing God. It's wonderful to see the children there. We continue to pray for you. We continue to support you. And for those persons watching, maybe for the first time and they're not sure what's happening, this is Kingdom Grace um, International High School, and the children that are there, their parents don't have the money, so you know admission is free. Admission is free. So when people sow into our ministry, we have members that are that they give what some of the you know some of the the, the funds it comes directly into this and it helps to take care of the, the schooling for the children it takes care of the teachers it helps to keep the environment clean and clean on a water cooler because the area is the water the pipe water they can't drink it we're, we're getting a cooler for them that will filter the water and that's something that we're working at least the school wall they are designed for them. So we thank God. God bless you, man of God. Thank you so much for coming in. We have to close now. We love it. We we thank the Lord for that quick video. Pastor Sam is faithful. He gets up every morning, 5 30, to, to come online with us here at Kingdom Grace because they are hours ahead. So it's night here in Jamaica, 9:20, but there it's 7:20. So God bless you, beloved. We have to finish. We, we kept you a little bit long tonight, but we thank the Lord it was worth it. God bless you. Thank you for coming on. We bless you. We thank God. We release you the grace of the Lord. We thank you and we look forward to see you this Sunday. Everybody has to be in church this Sunday. See you next week. Come back online. Meet us here. We're not done. Sport series is packed. It's full. And you 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 eat tonight. I know you were fed a lot, but you eat, you clean the you clean the plates, you eat everything. You're getting a balanced diet. We're not just giving a yam and banana. We're not just giving you a big bowl of rice, but we're giving you a balanced diet. You have to get your vegetables. You have to get your fruits. You have to get your protein, a little starch here. We're giving everybody a balanced diet. So we encourage you, come online, meet us here. Every Wednesday night, we're here online. Meet us, share, go online. Right now, if you haven't followed us on Facebook, do so because we ensure that all, everything, our messages, everything is there shared on Facebook. So go over right now, share us on Facebook and hit that follow button and do the same for YouTube. God bless you. We love you on behalf of myself, First Lady Lewis, and all the ministers, the leaders, and the workers of Kingdom Grace International Ministry. We say that we love you and we're looking so forward to see you. God bless you, Lady, Lady Brown from Canada. Uh, of course, joining also Lady Brown from Canada. Let me just give some quick shout-outs. God bless you, Lady Lorna from Curacao. 
God bless you. Our friends in the United States that are on, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Hunter, Sister Shana, all of these people, my God bless you for coming in. We thank you, our international partners. Shout out, shout out also to Brother Brown, his wife there in the UK. They are partners, they partner with us and we thank the Lord for them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. Take care, have a great night, sleep well, and we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you, God bless you.